people that might want to go to a chiropractor and think that he's going to cure me today. Yeah. Like, this is, this is it. I watched it on YouTube and I want the YouTube adjustment and, um, you know, what they don't realize there's a lot of components to pain. I mean, there's muscles, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's joints, there's chemicals, there's spiritual, there's emotional. There's a lot of reasons we have pain. Um, you know, it's easy when there's an injury, but sometimes it's hard when people come in, they're like, I don't know why I hurt. <laughs> Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Weapon X Holsters, quality handmade Kydex holsters made right here in Southern Utah. You can stop by the store, 1397 West Sunset Boulevard, number 115 in St. George, Utah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Derek Leg Podcast. We are here on another Saturday. This is episode 77. I've got a, I've got a guest today that I've actually... He's fairly new to me, I guess. We've known each other about six, seven months now. Yeah. Um, he's actually my personal chiropractor. So it was kind of fun. I was getting adjusted one day and he had brought up the podcast and I said, you should come on it. And so <laughs> and now a couple of weeks later, here we, here are. we are. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Russ Jepson. How's it going? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Russ, Russell. Yeah, Russ. Russ? Yeah. Perfect. Mom calls me Russell, but okay. <laughs> Derek calls me Russ. Your friends call you Russ. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, so this can be kind of cool for me because I can kind of tell the story and kind of backstory how we met and then the things that you guys offer at the chiropractic office. And then also we're going to get into, um, kind of a fitness supplement business that yeah. you guys just barely opened yeah, I'm and, excited. and I'm already on it. So it's right. kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so we met, I was in a car accident. Um, I was driving home. I was actually driving home from an ear doctor and uh, I was on Bluff Street. There was another accident on the side of the road, and we were at about 500 north. There's that stoplight at 500 north. Um, the car in front of me was stopped at the red stoplight, so I came to a stop, and I was looking in the rear view, and I could see a younger kid looking at the accident and not looking at me stopped. How and it so always happens. I saw the whole thing coming, you know, and he just drilled me, bam, and it's kind of a bummer because I was in my mom's car. Like if I was in my diesel truck, it probably wouldn't have touched my hitch, you know, yeah. but, um, destroyed the whole back of my mom's car. And, and like, I, I've had some back issues in the past. Um, I'd felt pretty good for a while. And after that, my neck was bothering me. My back was starting to bother me. And Andrew Spainhauer, um, is a lawyer in town that that's what they do is mm -hmm. a personal injury attorney. Mm -hmm. And, we've kind of ran in the same circles. So I was aware of him and I ended up just going over to him and, um, I was referred to him actually from my insurance guy. And so I went over, talked to him and then he referred me to you guys. So, um, I started doing chiropractic. Well, so I went and did a pain management, first. pain management yeah. first. And then they sent me to you guys. Um, we were doing chiropractor once a week, massages once a week at your guys's mm -hmm. office. The coolest thing I thought about it with your office is there's a medical side to it plus a chiropractic where I feel like typically that's like a voodoo thing. It's really thing. rare. Yeah. yeah. It's really rare. And so going in there, super comfortable. Um, we've had Sammy Brown, one of the masseuses or she's one of the amazing. massage therapists yeah. on. And yeah, she's great. And and I'm still going. I yep. still come in for kind of maintenance now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was in like April when that car accident happened. Yep. So. Um, it's December now. Anyway, so that's kind of how we met. Um, been going. I was going there once a week. Now we're doing it about every two weeks. Our staff misses you, by the way. <laughs> you get back in. <laughs> I know. I need to come in. I, the girls up front, I love them, man. <laughs> I every time I come in, I bust them up a little bit, and uh, we have a good time. Um, when I go places, I tend to feel like I've j I'm just I've been there forever, and every we're all friends. And so sometimes people get a little uncomfortable because I'm just busting them <laughs> up a little bit, but, uh, no, good time. Great office, great people. Um, and you've helped me a lot. I mean, like we've talked Appreciate about it. it. Yeah. Um, I chiropractic, you know, my wife's medical, my mom was medical. And so the chiropractic side, like I said, there's some weird stigma between <laughs> it, you know, and, um, it's helped me. My wife's even asked like, are, is that even helping you? And I'm like, yeah, it really does. Like I walk out of there and can tell a difference. So that's enough of me. I just kind of thought we'd backstory, get you that's on great. here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, give me a little bit of backstory from you 
And if you want to go over, you know, you're in Texas, you got to practice out there, yeah. maybe even some of your schooling to get to this point, I'll just kind of let you backstory that. Perfect. Well, we moved to St. George about three years ago. We had a pretty amazing opportunity. I'm, I'm from American Fork, Utah, born and raised Utah. Um, we moved to Dallas, Texas, uh, coming from small town, American Fork. Uh, it was a big change, big city. Um, and that's where I went to school, uh, chiropractic school there. Um, chiropractic school is, it's like medical school, uh, just a little different. It, it's about the same length, three to four years. Got to have a bachelor's degree, um, you know, big classes. Um, you're, you're there earning your doctorate degree. So it's a, it's a pretty big program. Um, we first job, we moved to Austin, Texas. We, we weren't going to come back to Utah. We, we loved the, the no snow, the great weather. And Austin was the fit outdoors, great scenery, green rivers, lakes. Uh, uh, we just loved it. So, uh, we were there for 10 years, had my own private practice, kind of a sports clinic, saw everybody, kids, um, you know, athletes, injured patients, um, after a while, we just kind of felt like Austin was getting too busy for us. You know, our kids were growing up and, and we were missing, we were missing home. Um, my parents, grandma and grandpa, they're here in, you know, in Utah. And we just kind of felt the urge to get back to Utah. I swore I had never changed clinics again. It, it was, it, it was like suicide trying to switch clinics. And I thought, no way there, th this is not going to happen. And, um, one of my good buddies, uh, Dr. Britt Christensen, he's one of the pain doctors here in, uh, in town, uh, with Southwest spine and pain, best friend since seventh grade basketball. Oh, I didn't middle know school. that. Yeah. Um, and, and we have been in touch ever since and kind of followed each other and, and texted each other. And he, he texted me and said, Hey, I've got a, got a great opportunity for you. He's like, our, our, our pain management clinic is looking for some form of therapy. And I, I told the guys that the only person we would bring would be Russ Jepson, my, my chiropractic friend. And right at first they were kind of like skeptical, like chiropractic, like we're mm. going to bring chiropractic in with medical. Right. Um, and it kind of just slowly, we kind of worked through it. Um, I came back and visited here a few times. We talked together as a group and it seemed like a natural fit. Um, so we sold, sold the clinic in Austin, big move. Kids were in middle school and, and, uh, still had young kids in you know um, preschool at the time, so it was a it's like tearing my kids' hearts. You know, they're just pulling them away from the home that they knew they'd been. You know, my I, my family had been in Texas thirteen years, so St. George was the only place. Yeah, the weather's good. It's beautiful here. Uh, growing up, this was the destination place, St. George. So that wasn't a hard thing. The jobs. It was just an amazing opportunity to, I almost kind of felt like as a chiropractor, like I owe this to my profession right? to go do something bigger than most of us can ever do, you know, go, go join medical, go join other therapies and, and, and see if we can bridge the gap. And, and so, you know, for so many years, medical and Cairo, they've kind of been at odds with each other, right? You know, the medical doctors are saying, don't go to the chiropractor. And the chiropractors are saying, don't go to the medical doctor. And, and then somehow they switch and then they, they find that out. And, you know, and so, um, it's been great firsthand to work with medical. And, and I, and I think I can say that about the pain management and the, the neurologist and the orthopedist and the rheumatologist and the endocrinologist and the primary care that's in our building that I think they can trust the chiropractic now. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they can trust all providers of chiropractic because there are some super holistic uh, chiropractors that I believe are very helpful and they are really good at what they do, but that's not for everybody. And so um, kind of this medical chiropractic, you know, um, idea really works. And so patients like you that need a little bit of everything but don't want to go like all over town and go to that building and go to that building. And what if the providers don't really communicate? So, I mean, that was, was that kind of how you experienced it? That it was kind of pretty yeah. smooth. I think the biggest thing for me too was coming in. So my previous back issues when I worked for the post office and I was on painkillers all the time and I was getting shots in my back and, um, it was like surgery is inevitable. 
And well, they probably just did the injection and said, come back when you're ready. That's what I mean. And you're yeah. kind of like, well, they're like, uh, well, three months I'm yeah. hurting again. Okay. Come get another one. Yeah. And I, that's where I was like, okay, I'm quitting the post office. I have to change something. This is destroying my body. And, and like we've talked, one of the things I did was I just slowed down all of my activity. And the only active thing I would do is work, you know, and football, basketball, all of softball, all those things I did all those years, I just stopped doing. And which isn't a good thing, yeah. but that's in my mind, that's where I thought, okay, I got to just make a change. If I'm going to be active, it just has to be to work. And when I came to, when I came to you and we kind of talked through, Hey, this is my history. This is what I've been told. And there was, there wasn't any pressure to not do that or do that. It was more like, well, what are your feelings? And then we just worked through it. And that's where I felt comfortable with or you. Let's, let's work together. You yeah. Know, there's a place for medicine and there's a place for injections, but there's a lot of time in between. Right. And so why don't we use that to help us and, and I can help them and they can help me. And guess what? You'll probably have less injections and you'll have less medications. doesn't mean that it won't happen again. Right. But maybe we don't have to wait till the next time and wait and wait and wait. And hopefully we can be a little bit more preventative. Well, I like um, the way you put it uh, a couple months ago was we're just maintenance. Yeah. Like we're kind of where my body's at right now. We're just maintenance. Yeah. And, and I think some people would be like, Oh, well it's job security to have maintenance. And I'm like, that's not in my case. Yeah, that's not what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if you didn't have maintenance, you wouldn't have your job security. Right. Me moving safes. Right. And maintenance, maintenance means work. Right. Like maintenance, you don't just like look at your car and just wait, right? Right. You, you, you maintain it. Exactly. You know, you make small changes over time. And when there's a problem in the car, you go back and you make another change. Uh, so that's, I, I tell patients that all the time, you know, kind of the analogy with the car, I'll use like the braces analogy, like, you know, the orthodontist is going to say, Hey, we're going to put these braces on your teeth, but be really patient. It's, yeah. You're not going to see changes today. It might even hurt for a few days. And every time you come in, I'm going to tighten those braces and your teeth are going to hurt for a few days. And then before you know it, you're going to look in that mirror and your teeth are pretty straight. And you're going to think, well, how did that happen? And you're, and you're going to look back and you're like, well, yeah, I've worn these braces for a while. I like Same that. Same thing with health. Like you might not see the benefits right now, but if you keep chipping away at it and you don't quit and you keep chipping away and you don't quit, um, your body will change. And so chiropractic, I, I think my profession's pretty easy where I don't have to worry about medicines or injections or, you know, serious problems where people's health and life is just in my hands and, and I have to make that, you know, important decision. It's pretty easy. We, we, we you know, stimulate the body, we, we stimulate the, the, the spine and that spine is our foundation. It's what holds us up. And if we take care of that, and we add a little pieces around it with motivation and exercises and health, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be able to maintain that for a long time. So we only have one body, right? You know, we, we got to take care of it. Well, so. when, when I'd come in, it would be like, um, where are we working today? What's bothering you today? And I liked that too, that it wasn't just an adjustment yeah. later, you know, maybe yeah. some heat Yeah. where it would come in. I'd say, oh, dude, it's just the shoulder, you know, and we'd put the the you, tens unit, the whatever they're called yeah. there. Yeah. They'd put it on my shoulder and we'd shock that up a little bit and we'd work shoulder, have a, an adjustment. And then we also did that detraction table too. Yeah. For a while. Right. So. And I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, it was just easy. It was come in, Hey, where you're at, you're talking, talk to you, shoulder, lower back, whatever it was. And we got worked on it and down the road. And, th and I was never in pain at all. Um, and there was one time I came in and I was like, dude, I'm hurting. And, and it was after we were on the maintenance thing, you um, work, right. You went to work, at, uh, um, hunting. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. How'd you forget that story? <laughs> True, an elk or a deer over your, we were shot. dragging a deer, dragging a deer. I, I Justin Watts is going to correct me on this, but I swear it was like 400 yards. I had to drag this deer. How heavy did this thing weigh? I don't know. I mean, it was a big three point. Like he was a good, good sized deer. And it was like through the sage brush and, and kind of sandy dirt. And, and I thought like when I shot it, I was like, okay, this ain't going to be that big of a deal. And then <laughs> I was about a quarter of the way and I was like, this was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, by the time I got it to the razor to where I could get the razor to it, I, I couldn't even stand up straight. And, and Justin had to come bail me out and throw it in the back of the razor. So we'd we get it to the truck what, three or four times and you 
did pretty good. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. First so. time came in. And so the, the day I got back, I called you guys, Hey, I need to get in. Um, I think it was just the next day I came in. I think they even said we can get you in today. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't know, I'm trying to catch up today <laughs> so I can do tomorrow. Um, came in the next day and that's what, that's what I'm getting at is I said, Hey man, I'm, I'm in pain. And then we kind of dialed back, right? And there was a little bit of adjustment, a little bit. How's this feel? Where are you at there? And it wasn't. There was a lot of attention on me and how I was feeling. I think Does that makes a lot, yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that might want to go to a chiropractor and think that he's going to cure me today. Yeah, like, this is this is it. I watched it on YouTube, and I want the YouTube adjustment. And um, you know what they don't realize? There's a lot of components to pain. I mean, there's muscles, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's joints, there's chemicals, there's spiritual, there's emotional. There's a lot of reasons we have pain. Um, you know, it's easy when there's an injury, but sometimes it's hard when people come in, they're like, I don't know why I hurt. I have no idea. Yeah. And we have to backtrack and figure out, well, was there ever any reason? And sometimes they can't think of it. And, um, you know, I tell people all the time, some people come to me in pain and some people come to me in no pain. I love these ones because they're, they, they chose to come because they probably th know that soon they're going to be in pain because they were probably once here. Yeah. So a lot of times I'm taking people from pain and I'm trying to get them over to here. Right. And sometimes it's really hard because they, they might give up or maybe treatments maybe give some pain initially. Um, and so, uh, every patient's a little bit of a juggle. You know, you'll have some chiropractors, they do one thing, lay on the table. I don't care how you feel. I'm just going to adjust head to toe and we'll see you next time. Right. And there's really no problem solving. And I've been to that. I mean, I've been and to And I those like those ones because I know that that's all I need. I just need someone to just get the job done and let's, let's get going. But most people don't, they, they don't know that. And so I, I love the profession of chiropractic. I mean, I started in my, I come from a medical background too. My, my two older brothers are an emergency room doctor and an internal medicine doctor. Wow. So college, I just thought, oh, I'm going to go to medical school. Um, my brother said, Hey, why don't you go become an EMT? I thought that was a great idea. I did that up at Utah Valley. Um, and then he hired me on in the emergency room. And so all through college, Every weekend, um, I'd work from basically 12 hour shifts, three days a week, th you know, the three weekends and did everything. I got to see it all. I bet. And I think that was really amazing to work in the emergency room. I think I had some like, um, extra privileges being the doctor's brother. You know, if it was like after 12, it's like, I could do anything I wanted, you know, <laughs> um, but I kind of saw all the different medical providers that have to come in. They're leaving their homes. They're leaving their baseball games. They're getting called in. Um, I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. I saw I saw enough of that, and I saw how the the orthopedics are just constantly leaving their families. That's what my wife does. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so she's so, a nurse practitioner for. So I saw that, surgeon. and and three years of this, and and I saw pain management. I saw medical care. Um, I saw sickness care, I saw it all there. And, and so after about three years, I kind of thought, well, out of all these providers that I saw that came in here, which one would I want to be? Yeah. And I really took a big step back. I'm like, I don't know if I really could, I mean, this is exhausting. This is stressful. Like it doesn't seem super healthy to me to have to be that stressed, um, whether it looks glamorous or not, you know, and so I kind of took a step back and figured, okay, um, I had about six months to graduate from college. I need to make a quick change. Um, I was just getting ready to study for the MCAT for medical school. Took a step back, told my wife, uh, we're not going to medical school. She jaw just dropped. She's like, what? Like we've been planning on this for four <laughs> years and we were living at her parents' house so that we could save up money and so that I could study and I just told her, I said, I just don't think it's for me. Um, she's like, well, your brothers are medical doctors. And um, so I thought about physical therapists. I thought about physician assistants, nurse practitioners. I kind of knew a lot of them from the, the ER. And uh, I'd been going to a chiropractor since I was eight years old. And it didn't even dawn on me hmm. until like that moment. I thought, well, what about chiropractic? And I was like, no, no, no I can do that. That's... 
that's too weird. <laughs> then I'm like, but no, I've, I've been a chiropractic patient since I was eight years old. Let, let me go shadow my chiropractor there up in American Fork, uh, Scott Barris. I'm sure he's still there. He was an amazing chiropractor. Um, so I said, hey, can I just come hang out with you for a few days? I just need to see if this is a path that I want to take. And he kind of runs a traditional family practice, chiropractic, kind of just very just in and out, the basics. And But I went in there and I just thought, what was the cool thing about his profession was most people, whether they were in pain or not, they were really happy to be there. They weren't asking for medications. They weren't asking for labs and urine testing and, you know, all this stuff. And they, they just, most people, whether they were in pain or not, like I could just tell that his job was pretty relaxed, like, you know, and, and, and then I could truly see how he was helping them with his own hands, which yeah. was really cool. He didn't have to rely on a textbook or anything else. He relied on his knowledge. And, and so I, I loved it. I started researching it and, um, it took me back to one, um, one moment when I was 17 and that also kind of clarified to me that that's what I want to do. Um, so a little example, junior golfer in high school, mm -hmm. um, just coming off a of baseball season, um, mm -hmm. thought I was in great shape, um, playing golf, just loving, mm -hmm. loving life. I'm, um, and one morning I couldn't, I couldn't get out of bed. 17 years old, I couldn't get out. Like something was stuck in my back. My, I couldn't move my neck. Uh, it was right in between my shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. And it was like a sharp stabbing pain. Like I had like a spasm or a Charlie horse, just something that was so sharp that I just couldn't move. Cause if I felt like I was going to move, it was going to pierce me or something. I don't know. Um, I was able after a while to get out of bed and I had a golf tournament that day at 12 o'clock. And all the coaches are like, you got to do something. Like, I can't even swing the golf club. I can't, I can't even sit move. <laughs> like, um, so the trainer, I made it to the school and she said, yeah, she put some heat pads on it. And it's like, yeah, that's pretty bad. She tried to rub it out. And she said, let's go to the physical therapist, see if he can do something. And he was kind of the school physical therapist. Everybody went there, um, spent probably an hour there on STEM and some other things, but still it felt like something was going to pierce me. Like mm -hmm. it just felt so sharp. Um, my dad, he's like, hey, let's go to the chiropractor. I was like, why well, nothing else to lose? Yeah. Um, I went into Scott there and, um, he's like, oh, it's one of your ribs out of place. And everyone's it's like, that's impossible. And he said, no, I, I'm going to adjust your rib back in and boom, he adjusted it. And like, it was like a ton of bricks just let go of my, like, huh. I just like, I could breathe. Yeah. I was sore. Um, and I remember my dad driving me to the, to the golf tournament and I'm just racing to get to the first tee. Didn't even warm up. And I looked back on that when I was trying to decide about chiropractic and I thought, I love sports. I love just treating this, you know, these kind of things. And that moment was powerful to me and powerful enough to say, Hey, it worked on me. Like if I'm going to be a chiropractor, I, pr I probably ha better have a good story to explain to people why <laughs> that was my everybody yeah. was going to be like chiropractor. And I remember in the ER, I went to, I remember the next, when I decided I told the staff, all the ER doctors that were grooming me to be like the next medical doctor. And I think every one of them would just drop their jaw. Like, like we failed him. Like <laughs> he's going to chiropractic like, school. What, what did we do wrong? Like, what did we like out of all <laughs> things? Like, I could just see it in their hearts, just like crushed them all. And, but I was, uh, it was awesome. So, yeah. So one thing I failed, um, so it's Vista healthcare. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even go. mention that. So, yes. so where you're at now is Vista healthcare. So brand traditionally new building. it's been called Southwest spine and pain. And then, uh, here in Southern Utah, they've, uh, actually in Utah, they've grown so big that I think they have, you know, six or seven pain clinics and three or four rheumatology clinics. So they need a kind of a, a, a managing kind of partner, you know, an overall name. And so they've, they've changed it to Vista healthcare Okay. and within Vista healthcare, there's lots of little subdivisions. Yeah. So Southwest spine and pain still exists, but the umbrella is under Vista healthcare. Okay. Um, so my division is called Vista healthcare sports spine and injury center. Okay. So and yeah. you're, it's mall drive. Is that what you're mall drive? Yeah. Right across that lens and right next to that Revere health building. And uh, the, the building's actually still 
growing and being built and they're adding a lot of other providers to it. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty awesome to work there. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean, you can't miss it. The no, big, no. big Vista right across yeah. the sign on the street. I mean, yeah. if you guys are looking for anything, definitely look them up. Um, yeah. One thing in, in correct me if I'm wrong, or I'll let you expound on it. Um, kind of being the medical side of it, you guys accept insurance traditionally mm-hmm. chiropractors don't or something. How does that work? Um, every year that passes more insurances take chiropractic. Okay. So I would say, you know, maybe 60 to 70% of insurances are covered. Okay. Um, they, they accept chiropractic. They're actually starting to accept acupuncture and other conservative treatments. Um, chiropractic's not surgical rate. So if insurances aren't covered, we have cash rates, you know, we can get people in, uh, a lot, like, you know, what happened with you, a lot of people that are in accidents, they don't realize they probably have hundred percent coverage to come in, whether it's a car accident or whether it's a personal injury accident at work or at home or something like that, they, they probably have coverage. So if, if you ever get hurt, you know, that that's, you know, kind of a, an important thing to, to recognize. Yeah. But you, I mean, you're able to pay cash and it's not super expensive. Um, and there's different things you can do. And like, what I like about your guys is, uh, I was going to say place, planet, planet. <laughs> your guys' clinic, yeah. um, is you have massage therapists there mm-hmm. too. So you have a range of things and there's even the whole side of it of like physical therapy mm-hmm. that I haven't even experienced. And that's, that's another, I think slowly. So we started this idea with the Cairo medical probably about five years ago. And it really was entry level. Like no one had really, there was probably a few clinics in the country doing this. So we weren't brand new, but we were definitely in Utah and kind of in the West. This was a new idea. Five years later, it's all over the place now. Yeah. Chiropractors are in, in, in lots of medical clinics. I know up in Provo and in, in, in Northern Utah, there's chiros working in the hospital with the neurologist. Hmm. And so we added physical therapy, which is rare too. Yeah. Like, Cause we're almost kind of like the same thing, except uh, we have a, maybe a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, kind of a paradigm that, that kind of goes back to a specific moment where we, we also kind of believe more in, in the spine and adjusting the spine. Physical therapy is a lot of exercise stretches, but they're also starting to add in some manipulations and starting to have some of the chiropractic methods in their own way. And chiropractors are starting to take some of the physical therapist modalities and stretches and exercises. So we're all kind of just kind of trying to mesh together. There's still a little bit of differences between the two, but um, I love manipulating and working on the spine and, you know, s- specific injuries and f- physical therapist loves exercise. And so it just works in our right. clinics. It's like, you can come in and get everything, you know, we'll treat anyone from age one to two to a hundred, you know, and there's a little bit of everything. Our massage programs, I, I always feel is like a critical component. I mean, he doesn't, who doesn't like a massage, right. you know, and <laughs> like, um, everyone's like, wait, so you got in a car accident and, and now massages. you get chiropractor yeah. massage every week. Yeah. Like, doesn't sound like a too yeah. bad. <laughs> and I like, took advantage not, of it. <laughs> they're, they're like, not that relaxing. <laughs> um, it, medical massage kind of, uh, massage and chiropractic clinic. It's, 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 it's helpful. I mean, they get in there and they break up that scar tissue. They, they do kind of help areas relax. Um, I think a lot of it too, is just trying to help with emotional and just trying to get you to feel, you know, comfortable and, and kind of cope with pain. Um, we have four massage therapists now. I don't know if you knew that. So, I didn't. So we just, we just hired two more Okay. in the last month. So Sammy's still there though. So there was Sammy, Sammy, Kenzie, Kenzie, and they're the, t- I saw yeah. both of them. Yeah. And then now there's Bree okay. and Whitney. Cool. So. Southern Utah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and it's hard to get massages in town. Right. You know, like there was a, a while where people just couldn't find massages. Part of it was COVID. People weren't quite comfortable with the idea. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and, and some of the, the chains in town were pretty full. So, you know, it, I feel like our clinic's kind of a hidden secret. 100% it is. We're not really like on the corner of the street with a big chiropractic sign. We're upstairs in the medical say. center. You, you go know? into the building and then we don't get upstairs. walk-ins <laughs> like, what is, like, you know, we, you know, we're kind of a hidden secret and, and we kind of like it that way, but we'd love to, 
to help as many people, you know, that, that you know, w- want to come in. So, yeah, I think at any level, like you're saying, different ages, different reasons, you're in pain, maybe you're starting maintenance, mm-hmm. you know, any, and even physical therapy, like there's, uh, like when I've gone in, I'm laying face down, right? So I don't see anything. Yeah. You're in your little cubicle and, but you can hear like other people working out, these people doing mm-hmm. stretches, those guys doing lifts and, and some I, people like that. And some people want to be in a room and they just want to be quiet. And yeah. we, we do that. We have that. Sure. And, but we like to just kind of motivate and keep everybody part of the, of the team, you know, say hi to everybody. Um, you know, we're, I, I would say a fairly young crowd over there and, and we love it. No. Yeah. It's a good we, group yeah. of people for sure. So. Like, like I said, every time I go in, um, the guy's going to beat me up for not remembering his name, but there's a kid, he's got curly hair. Alex. Yeah. yeah. So every time I go in, I'm like, dude, man, you're just really good at looking busy, bro. Like, I don't think you ever do anything. You just always look busy. <laughs> he gets after me every now and then. Don't, but it's fun. Like I said, I, I, you feel part of the crew. Like when I go, or at least I do. Um, I don't know if everyone feels that way. I definitely do. Um, but yeah, so a couple things I wanted to mention was Vista. Definitely want to get that out. I tend to do that. I'll forget to even like yeah. name the person's business. And then we go an hour and then yeah. I don't even name it. Um, the other thing is, is that you're two time best of Southern Utah yeah. gold winners. Yeah. Um, we I came mean, in town and I think we probably made some other chiropractors pretty oh, I imagine. off. They're like, who where is that guys? guy? I don't know where he's at. <laughs> upstairs. He's upstairs. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's fun. I mean, it's not what we strive for, but it, it was a great award and, uh, hopefully we'll get three in a row and uh, sweep it for the last three years, but we just have a great, great group of providers. Uh, we just try our hardest to be as honest, friendly. Um, I try to talk to everybody as if they don't know what's going on, if they don't understand chiropractic, cause it's important to me that they feel comfortable and that we're answering their questions. And so, you know, I, it, I could probably be a lot busier if I just went quicker, mm. uh, but I would rather be less busy and have the people that I have comfortable. Yeah, and that they like they feel like that's my place. See, I I run into that and have issues sometimes because I talk a lot, and so normally when I'm interacting with someone, I I get the feeling that they're just like, "Hey, man, I gotta go," you know. And sometimes they do, and I totally yeah. get that. And that's the yeah. thing we've gone in. And I've just been like, "Dude, can I just ask you something?" Yeah. And I've opened up about some of my uh, yeah. lack of exercising and whatnot. And we've talked through that, and um, we're gonna get into something after that. After we kind of finish up this chiropractic journey with you, um, yes. Yeah, so one thing I want to talk about, and I think it's a focus because, like, we kind of touched it already, but. What are some of the misconceptions? What are some of the things that you've heard that you've been able to correct or just the common, you know, reasons why people wouldn't do chiropractic? Yeah. And and how do you counter that? I mean, every single day it's, I, I'm kind of cleaning up uh, the misconceptions of chiropractic. So right at first, it was kind of a big struggle when I became a chiropractor, I graduate school I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, I'm a chiropractor, you know, and everybody's going to love me. Uh, it, you know, it seemed like every day it was just like, well, are you sure that works? And and I heard this and I heard that and, and my mom told me this and, and don't ever do that. And so it was, it was, I soon realized I wasn't the most popular guy around, yeah. you know, that they teach in school that, hey, you're going to, you, you did it, man. Um, you know, and I think a lot of it started, I mean, chiropractic came around kind of with a, with a bang. I mean, it was kind of during the times of the late 1800s, there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, a a lot of different types of medicines, a lot of people trying to to come up with the next best uh, cure to certain things. And, um, there was a, a, a guy named Dee Palmer. There's actually a chiropractic school in Iowa, which is the first chiropractic school called Palmer, uh, uh, chiropractic school. Uh, that's named after him. Dee Dee Palmer, um, kind of a, kind of a bone setter, a conservative, holistic, magnetic, um, practitioner in the late 1800s, always trying to figure out how to help people and heal people. Um, he was getting into the spine and learning all the different connections and pathways of the nerves. Um, there wasn't really any known chiropractic adjustment or spinal adjustment. Uh, there was a lot of traction, uh, there was, you know, other types of treatments that they would try to help the spine heal. 
um, his janitor, out of all people, had recently gone deaf. Hmm. Um, um, his name was uh, Harvey Lillard. People in the chiropractic world know that name. Um, Harvey Lillard, janitor, 1895. Uh, D.D. Palmer comes along and, and, and has a theory that if he adjusts his upper neck um, in the cervical number one or the cervical number two, which is up really high, almost right behind the ear, those nerves connect into the ears and into the brain um, and they sit right below the ear. And he had a theory that, hey, I'm going to adjust my janitor and we'll see what happens. Yeah, what do you have to um, lose? <laughs> two adjustments, his hearing came back. Really? So you can kind of see where over the last century, that moment looks a little strange. You know, like right. you got your medical professionals that have probably heard of that or or they, maybe they never have, but you know, in the early 19, I'm sure it has escalated into chiropractic is crazy. Yeah. You know, like, um, so all the time, you know, we're going to hear a lot of, of strange things. And, and a lot of it is, I think just a lack of knowledge that they do think we're voodoo doctors. Right. And granted, there are a lot of strange providers. <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of strange providers. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell this one. It's pretty, it's funny, but sad, but I think everybody will like it. And so, um, this is why I think sometimes chiropractics gets a bad rap. So my brother, my older brother's internist, medical doctor, um, if a medical doctor comes to my office, I'm going to really try to take care of him. I'm going to be really sharp and making sure that he understands what this is all about. Cause I know that he kind of might be judging me a little bit. Right. So. I'm in chiropractic school, super pumped, just loving chiropractic. They're just giving us all the good information, getting us hyped up to become chiropractors and how powerful and you know how healthy it can be. And um, my brother, he's like, man, I've been having some back pain and, and I'm gonna, I'm, I've been going to this chiropractor. I was like, wow, good job. Like, that's amazing. Like, yeah, I didn't, he didn't even ask me where to go. He just, he, he's been going and so he had gone six or seven times and he's like, Russ, you know, it's just my back's not feeling any better. And I was like, well, yeah, we might need to go get some images or, or go talk to a medical provider or somebody and see what's going on. And, um, you know, his chiropractor shut the door and is like, if you're willing to listen to me a little bit more, I have some other, other things that maybe could help you. So he asked him all these questions and he kept typing them in a computer. And, you know, my brother's like, could tell something was off. He's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to play along with this a little bit. So he's asking him about his pain and I might be, I mean, this was 13, 14 years ago. So Steve, if you listen to this, sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, um, so he, basically he came to a conclusion and said, you know, I've, I've got some bad news for you. You've got these entities on you and that's why you have back pain. My, okay. my brother about lost. It. <laughs> I was in chiropractic school and that's not what we were trained. Like we right. were trained, like be really good providers and help people. And I lost my mind. Cause I'm like, that's mm. not, that's not what it's about. Right. Like this exists. And I, in school, I didn't really know that existed. And I even wrote the board of Utah. Um, I wrote a letter. I'm like, that is, I don't know what that is. Priestcraft, witchcraft. I don't know, but that he's, that chiropractor's doing that to a medical doctor. You wonder why right. medical doctors don't like us. Right. So I think part of my vision, part of my um, care is to just make sure everybody knows what's going on and that chiropractic can't help everybody everybody in every single condition, but, you know, it's there to be a, of help. And, you know, it, it's, it's a valid profession. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, you know, there, there is, uh, chiropractic schools and chiropractic providers all throughout the world. Um, you know, I think our own St. George, Southern Utah probably has 50 or 60 in a small town like this and they're all busy. Right. You know? And so, um, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I'm sure there's lots of little misconceptions and, um, I think the biggest one is everyone thinks I'm going to break their neck. You know, I, I mean, because you see, you see movies and you see like Jackie Chan. Right. And they're like, oh, <laughs> and they <laughs> snap, didn't even, snap. yeah, they didn't even touch the <laughs> neck and their neck's broken. And 
So that one, I have to reassure people a lot that the spine is made to move. We have joints and, and they're all over our spine. We can move our own back. We probably can't move it as efficiently as a chiropractor can, but um, so I have to reassure them that chiropractic is very safe. The, the chances of harm are very, very minimal. We actually are one of the, the lowest malpractice build providers in the country, which shows you if we don't pay, I think I pay like two grand a year hmm. for malpractice, which means they think we're pretty safe. Right. But That's not a liability. That one injury or that one problem, all of a sudden, you know, it's like now we're all, it's all going to happen to everybody, you know? Um, and we don't realize that other medicines and other things are at more risk to harming us. So as a chiropractor, I don't, you know, I don't worry about, I don't worry about injury or injuring somebody. I, I do it within the, the limits and, um, try to do it as carefully and gently as I can. And, and I think, I think it works so far. So what about people that crack their own necks and crack their own Good backs. Question. Is that all okay? Because my brothers have done that yeah. their whole lives. So, and so, I don't even know how. I can't even do it. So sometimes our brain is telling us, help me, because a joint might be in the wrong position or there might be some some stimulus or some some you know issues in that area and your brain's trying to help fix it, but it, it can't. And so it tells you, hey, if you adjust there and you move it, it's going to feel good. Hmm. And so the brain says, I want to feel good. And so most people that self crack, they probably do it like all day long or they can do it at will. Yeah. My brother, like my 10, oldest brother 15, can do it 15, 20 wants. times. Once they start getting adjusted. So imagine they're kind of cracking or adjusting is probably a better word about a fourth of the way, you know, a joint has a, a, a range of motion. Yeah. And when we self crack, we're just releasing a little pressure. We're moving that joint just a little bit. And they're probably moving the same joint over and over and over and over. We've got so many other vertebrae. So when we start kind of realigning them all and adjusting them all the way, um, they stop doing that. Mm. So people that do that, they've got back pain. So my oldest brother needs to come see you. They got back pain because <laughs> I mean, they hurt. crack his neck. And it kills you everything. And most people, once they start getting aligned, they, they just don't have the need to do it because okay. nothing's telling them they hurt. And so I tell people all the time, um, you know, that's, that's what we want to do. Um, I also tell them that movement's okay. Like it's okay that our spine moves. And I also teach people that when they're nervous, I say, Hey, do you ever self-adjust your neck? Yeah. All the time. I said, okay, hmm. it's okay. Like, you know, like, don't be afraid of chiropractic now. Cause you know, we're just going to help you. Right. And like, Oh, that makes sense. I said, however you do it, we're just going to help you do it better. So when I'm popping my knuckles and stuff that my mom's always got mad yeah. at me about, that's okay. I don't think there's research that <laughs> says that's bad. I don't think anyone's like ah, figured mom. that out. <laughs> I mean, you're releasing gas and pressure in those joints and I don't know, you know, so. <laughs> but your personal opinion, just for my mom, it's okay. I, I would say, yeah. Ah, yeah. I win. Take that mom, Derek's mom. <laughs> Um, okay. Did I do want to pivot and kind of switch Let's gears, but is there anything else that you want to kind of cover with that? I, mm. I feel like we kind of gave it a broad. I think that works. I like it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next thing I want to pivot to is I think it's awesome. And I'm, uh, I mean, I've been referred to as like a serial entrepreneur. I don't know if I really like that. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I started businesses. I've been through growing pains. I've done it all myself. I'm starting to figure out how to plug other people in. Um, I mean, I've not figured it out. I'm still trying to, you know, do it myself. But, um, when you told me about this company that you guys had started in Southern Utah and it's, it's not a, to me and correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a start in your basement type of thing. Like this is a full blown brand that you guys are launching right now. Um, so go, I'll let yeah. you, don't let me butcher well, it. I, I'll let you do it. I brought you some gifts to kind of show you. So I see that black hat that you're wearing. I yeah. think you might need to get a new one. I so, do. Um, <laughs> You guys, I brought Derek a new hat. What do you guys think? It's called Valhallen. Um, that's for you there. Awesome. Uh, we'll talk about this here. So, um, yeah, I mean, where did this come from? So this is called Valhallen. Um, Valhallen is a, is a sports nutrition company. And what you're looking at here is a pre-workout supplement. Okay, I'm sure you guys have seen pre-work. I'm sure you've seen Bucked Up around yeah. town. You know, they've got stores. They all started with one pre-workout just like this. And then now they've, they've grown real big. And, um, 
for years, I've been in kind of the supplement industry. My clinic in Texas, I had a whole room dedicated to supplements. Okay. So I've always kind of had that passion and I've always thought it'd be really cool to kind of have my own, but I don't, didn't have the time nor the means, or I didn't even know where to start. Um, so when I, when I moved down here and we did this business, uh, Dr. Christensen and myself were like, we, we should really do that. We have a lot of people that we see and that we could maybe, um, kind of help educate and motivate and which was great coming from a medical doctor right. kind of saying, Hey, supplements are important and maybe not all of them, but you know, let's get into that. So, um, we kind of had that, that vision probably four or five years ago and we, we got it, we were getting everything together and we had a really hard time on the name. Like, well, we don't want to be too medical, like RX supplements or, yeah. you know, we, and we got stuck on it and we, 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 you know, we spent a lot of time on it and we kind of just brushed it off to the side. Two years pass, uh, Dr. Christensen and um, his brother-in-law, Stetson, Stetson Olson, um, fantastic guy. I mean, he is a fitness entrepreneur, fitness enthusiast, uh, gym rat, uh, big, strong dude. I mean, I mean, just think like a Viking, yeah. think like a big football player, lineman. And so he kind of came to Brit and said, Hey, I've got this brand that's already done. And, and I want to get into the sports nutrition world. And, and I want you guys to join with me. And we're like, well, we've, we've been thinking the same thing too, but we didn't know we didn't have a brand. <laughs> and he says, well, I'm a software engineer. So I've kind of been messing around with logos and brands and, um, and this is what I've made. And he showed it to us and we're like, <laughs> that's it that is it. We didn't have a choice really. Cause it was done. He's just asking for us. Do we want in? And, uh, Stetson just loves Vikings, loves them. He says he's a Viking, you know, he, he loves them, knows everything about them. And so we started learning about what the name means. And we're like, man, that's really cool. Like Valhalla, Val Valhalla. I mean, it's a gathering place. It's, it's, it's where, you know, everyone strives to be in the Viking, you know, community. It's their, like the resting place, it's, you know, gathering place. Um, Vikings, like a clan, their, their family, their brothers, their sisters, um, they will do anything for you. I mean, those battles were probably crazy. Oh, they they were sure. probably a little crazy. They were nuts. I'm sure yeah. they were taking some stuff. <laughs> um, but we just liked the brand and, you know, we, we, um, we thought what, what is one thing we could start with that is popular right now? And, you know, we, we looked around, we, we did a lot of research and we went to this, I was using one, a pre-workout, the other guys were using one and we thought, how cool would that be to see if we can get some of the other things out of the other ones and, and make our own. So we started kind of a, a journey on just researching. We all had jobs. We weren't desperate. Yeah. We said, hey, let's take some time. Let's go to the, all the top brands and um, didn't realize there's hundreds of pre-workouts. Oh, sure. I thought maybe there was 20 or 30, but there's hundreds. And so we really wanted a top tier. If we were going to do this, we wanted a top tier. Um, so we... we kind of gathered all the, the ingredients. We wanted some kind of new things that maybe weren't all combined in the other ones. We wanted to stand out just a little bit. Um, we looked at some of the other ones that had, you know, dyes and artificial colors and, um, you know, some, some extra, extra things that we just didn't feel like needed to be in there. Some of them will put every single supplement in this creatine. I mean, everything you want. And they're like, it's all in one, but they don't realize that some of those things break down at different times of the day and some of them should be done after workouts. And so we really wanted just the best pre-workout. For pre-workout. For, yeah. And and we didn't want one that wore off after 30 or 40 minutes with a crazy crash, which I've experienced. We wanted one that lasted a little longer, uh, tasted a little smoother. Um, breaks down easier. Breaks down, it's not gritty. And granted, this is our first run, um, you know, uh, we've run into some snags here or there where we're, we're correcting and fixing, but uh, we we basically went and interviewed several manufacturers. We felt like we had the brand. We felt like we had the three people. 
Um, we had the patience. We had a little bit of money, um, not a ton, but we thought, you know what? Let's not like mortgage our house. Right. Let's just go real slow and Build see it right, if, though. let's see if the community can kind of catch on to it. Um, if it doesn't, we'll go to a different community. Um, so we researched manufacturers. We interviewed. Most of them wouldn't give us the time of day. Um, we found a local one. I'm going to give them a huge plug because they're amazing. They're out of Leverican, out of all places. Who thought that the supplement man manufacturer would be in Leverican? Uh, it's Vital Packs, the Roosh brothers okay. over there. Yeah. Um, so they took us in. We showed them the, the logo, and they were like, wow. <laughs> we love it. We love, we love it. Like we can make this for you. You got to just get us the ingredients and tell us what you want in it. But uh, they have a huge research and development team. So that kind of took us out of it. And, and we said, okay, we know what we want. We have the brand. We know the ingredients. We just need someone who can make it, who has the machines, who can bottle it, who can, you know, make it right. And so um, they've been wonderful to work with. We just dropped this about, about a month ago. Um, and we've got it in the hands of bodybuilders, men and women, uh, triathletes, you know, CrossFitters, weekend warriors, um, people that just drink it. Um, I've got people that are like, you know what, I'm just going to replace that monster or, you know, like I just need some energy, but I don't want it full of high fructose corn syrup and a bunch of the, the unnecessary sugars. So they'll use it. Um, so, I mean, it's so far tested really well. Now it's just a matter of how do we grow? Yeah, you know, track and record. So, and... you know, we're using social media as best as we can just because we feel like that can spread faster than us going and knocking on doors. We don't have time. Mm -hmm. You've got kids. I've got ki Like, it's just really hard to, like, get in the car and go knock on doors and go to gyms. And so we're just, we're just taking it slow. We're letting social media. We're trying to find influencers and people that want to try it and post it and you know, and, and we've got it in a few gyms as well. Um, so it's been pretty good. So that's awesome. So I'll tell my story about yeah. it a little bit. So, um, one of the times I kind of opened up with you at the clinic and I, I said, Hey man, this is kind of what I'm going through. I, everything I'm going 150 miles an hour all day, every day. I mean, I work seven days a week. Um, if I'm not working, you know, I'm trying to relax at my house with my kid and, um, but anyway, so I'm always going, always going. And I've just gotten in this habit of, I crush a monster every day. Yeah. I mean, every day. And we have, them. Um, like I've got them at my house. I uh, mean, how many Mavericks do you drive past going to work? And you know, whether it's, it's pretty much always monsters. Sometimes I'll do rock stars when I'm driving a lot. Um, we do runs to Vegas often. I do runs to Salt Lake often. And, uh, we've got this property in California now. So I've been driving out there a lot to, to, uh, What's the word to, I always want to say rehab. That's not the Ren right. Renovate. Yeah. Renovate. <laughs> I don't know. Rehab like, the house. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rehab. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I'm, I'm going out to California, driving out there and, and so then I'm really crushing energy drinks when I'm doing that. And it's funny because I know that like I've drank and I've drank so many of them that it's not even touching me anymore, yeah. but I just keep drinking them. And, and we kind of talked about a little bit of working out, a little bit of fitness. You know, if I do start doing, you know, lifting exercises or, you know, we, I just kind of opened up to you. That's what I'm getting at. That was a long way to say that. And, and you said, Hey man, I'm, we kind of started this pre-workout. We're just launching it right now. Um, and you told me a story about one of your friends that drives to Cedar, Cedar city. city. Yeah. yeah. And he just breaks one down in a water bottle and just kind of sips it throughout yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I've, I've got water bottles at my store. And so that's what I've started doing. I, when I get to my store in the mornings, um, I take a scoop and before I was taking like a half a scoop. Um, I actually feel better when I take a full mm. scoop. And so I have a funnel. I just dump it in my water bottle. I shake it up and I just carry it around with me until it's gone. A shaker bottle, man. I know. <laughs> I'm poor, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was begging for a hat. <laughs> and so, so yeah. And then, and so the, my favorite part about it, and I haven't worked out a ton in my life. I was never a gym guy. Um, I have taken pre-workouts, protein shakes, all that stuff. When I was younger with my brothers and we all worked out, um, it's not, it, it actually tastes good. Like Dang it actually good. tastes and it's, it's pina colada, right? Yeah. Pina colada. And I actually had a pina colada in, um, Mexico two months ago and I didn't like it. 
And so when, when I was nervous when we did this, we were trying to find a flavor that was just a little different than the traditional. Every, the traditional is a lot of strawberries and fruit punch and the blue raspberries are huge. We didn't want to have any dyes in it. Um, and so we wanted something that was kind of just white Yeah, and we're like oh, coconut or pineapple or something like that. And when we said pina colada, it was kind of like, I don't know about pina colada. That's a little too girly. <laughs> like put a little yeah. umbrella in yeah. it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so we narrowed Girly's it down. fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I, and I like the brand cause I think that it kind of can be, it's got a little pink in it and yeah. But we we tested it and and we narrowed it down to two flavors and we'll get more flavors coming. We we have one waiting, um, we have a peach mango waiting that will come soon as soon as we get our next uh, order in. But um, the pina colada smashed our testing. Everybody said yeah. that's the one. So um, yeah, I mean it's good. Yeah, I mean the two things about it is it tastes really good, but it breaks down great. Yeah. I mean, every like I there's said, every no, now and then, like, grit zero. A lot of pre workouts, you shake it, and at the bottom, there's grit. Always, so it's if like you don't sand drink down it there. fast, it's down at the bottom. And now, most pre workouts, you still need to shake it a little bit. Well, that's what I'm saying. So throughout, yeah. so I drink mine throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, it'll take me four hours to drink it, and I'll just kind of sip it. Yeah. And and we kind of talked. You're like, well, that's not exactly what it's yeah. designed yeah. for. <laughs> you're never getting the full release of the product because it, it basically if you if you ask a bodybuilder that takes a pre-workout they'll be pumping iron in 10 minutes they're like oh there it is there's the beta alanine and then pump 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 and they're like oh there's the nitrogen and and uh, i i have a hard time feeling that but you ask and 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 i ask them well do you drink it during the and they're like never you just gotta like drink it fast and, you know, maybe five minutes before, and then during your workout, drink something else, some amino acids or okay. something else like a creatine or, but the pre-workout is to get in. So, um, but you know, like which one's better sipping on it, um, getting some, you know, good products. Mo- most of these are, you know, um, you know, all the things that's in it is supplement based. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing harmful in there. Right. It does have caffeine. So if you're sipping which on I'm- it, your caffeine loads coming in slow. You know, if you were going through three or four rounds of this a day, yeah, that's a lot of caffeine. Sure. And and caffeine is is used best when you need it. And in, in the gym, you know, some people are really worried with the, the caffeine. And I tell them, well, you want to work out, right? Like, have you ever worked out with a little caffeine in? Caffeine gives you focus. It wakes you up. It, it actually gives you desire to keep pushing harder. And so I look forward to having this to work out because I know... I'm going to push myself. I'm going to push myself during this workout. Otherwise, if I didn't, I'm going to be on my phone. I'm going to like, you know, after the whole hour, I'm going to feel like I wasted half of it because I just wasn't pushing. Yeah. Um, and so like for me, like I'm not a, I'm not a big dude. I've always just been really thin bone, skinny, um, stressful life, work, school, kids. Um, you know, I've, probably for three or four years, always tried to make it to the gym, maybe once, maybe twice a week, but it was really an inefficient workout. And then I started using a little pre-workout the last few years. And then as soon as this dropped, I've kind of been five to six days a week just because I love it. Like yeah. I love to work out now. And this, and this has given me some passion because I feel like I'm kind of in that fitness world and I feel like I owe it to myself. Like it's time to bulk up a little bit. <laughs> Will I ever bulk up? I don't know. But in, in about six weeks since I started trying this for me up 10 pounds is a lot. Like it's taken me 15 years to mm. gain anything. So yeah. I'm excited about it. I think it kind of gives me the energy to, to want to, you know, keep working at it. So, um, next step gym time. Yeah. Yeah. I told him, I'm like, I'm going to come pick you up. I know. He's I'm like, Hey, this is this. when I'm at the gym. Yeah. I'll come get you. <laughs> well, and I, I told you, I said, you know, if you're looking for, cause you, I think the next time I came in, you said, Hey, have you tried it? Do you oh, have yeah. any input? Any? And I said, dude, I'm not the feedback guy. Cause I'm not the guy out there using it for what it's supposed to be, but I've let my wife use some of it or oh, I've given right. some yeah. to her and, and she's, she was training for a half marathon. She had ran it and now she's training for another one. And anyone that knows Amanda and I like, She's rock climbing. She's mountain biking. She's, um, she's not a ton like lifting. Um, she did CrossFit for a little bit, but she's in this like endurance running thing right now. And, 
and, and I'm more like, you know, I can't get hurt if I'm on the couch watching football, even though I, even though I'm pretty much going all the time. But, um, so I kind of, I gave some to her and I asked her, Hey, what do you think about that? They're kind of looking for feedback. You know, what do you think? And she was taking one of the more popular brands. Um, it, uh, and I'm not in this space, but like in Southern Utah, it's very popular. She was taking this other brand and, and she says, well, the, the brand I've been taking makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> and and she's like yeah. with this one it doesn't make me angry and and she said so she's like i like it a lot and i said well like any feedback and she said get another bottle <laughs> and so she told me just to get more and and so we split that bottle she took half of it put it in a bag and she's been using it and then i keep the bottle at the store and yeah. then i use it at the store but so we were sh- actually quite surprised going into this i really thought our our market was gym goers like the gym people, because mm-hmm. I know in the gym, probably about 75%, you can see them all drinking their stuff, you know, and they talk about it and it's all they do. So I knew that, okay, there's our market, but in our test runs and, and the people that we've given it to, we've got some, some Ironman, we've got some cyclists, we've got some marathoners that are like, that stuff really kept me going. Now it doesn't have a lot of electrolytes they're, they're going to still need to doesn't have calories like they're going to need to like yeah. eat or they're going to need to get some other things in there some salt to help them but that first hour it's going to really help them and and I'm shocked to hear from the endurance people that it's not just a pump yeah it's, it's you know it's a focus it's a uh you know it, it's it's got some energy to keep you going and you're probably burning a lot of it off while you're exercising mm-hmm. so you know that's exciting that's so great. what's the next step with this are you guys going I mean, oh. is it the big dream? What do you guys... We don't know. Just next I mean, next the, flavor. The, That's the next yeah, step. Yeah, the big dream's always there. I mean, we all have our professions, but, you know, we we love to get our families involved and our kids. They love it to just kind of help us. Like, it's kind of like their little, like, project. Like, sure. my little kids are like, am I going to be like a Valhalla kid? And I'm like, maybe, <laughs> maybe you will be. And um, so, yeah, our, our, our first our first goal right now is to make sure it's, it's good. Yeah. Make sure people like it before we put any other time or efforts or money into it. And Got you. we feel like we're there. We feel like vital packs over in Leverican did a, an amazing job. The bottle looks great. Uh, the market's tough. I'm sure there it's saturated. And so people are comfortable with what they take, but most people are open to trying anything else. Like they're, they're, they can always go back to their comfort. Sure. So most people that we talk to that maybe we're a little nervous, like they're, they're big fitness people. They're like, yeah, sure. I'll try it. I go through these all the time. Like what's the worst, you know? And most people write back and say, that is the best pre-workout they've ever had. Now, I don't know how nice they are, you know, like, <laughs> but some of these people we don't know. Sure. So for them to do that, um, so I, th- I think the next step, we're getting these made in little stick packs, like the little crystal like yeah, yeah. packs that I'd be it's going to be a lot easier be. to hand out. I mean, I'll, I'll go to the gym and hand those things out like candy, right. you know, um, or you open a bottle and there's 30 of them in there. Cause you know, sometimes this gets kind of all over the place. You yeah, know, yeah. You're dipping and you're scooping it in the car and I've got this like little makeshift funnel <laughs> at the store yeah. <laughs> that you get stuff all over. So that's kind of our, our what's in the works right now is we're idea. getting stick packs. It's just a one serving. Um, that way people can buy it if they just want to try it and they don't want to commit to a full a full tub. Um, so mm-hmm. a stick pack. Uh, we have peach mango ready. Um, we, it's not made yet, but we're just we're ready to give vital packs the go go ahead. Uh, we have to have certain margins met. We want to make sure that when we order this and we have it made, they don't make just a couple for us. They make sure. A, a lot large order a lot because they have machinery that they can't clean for 10 they got to like do an order what is an order i uh, mean are you talking 2500 to okay. 5000 of these it depends most places will only do 5000 so we are lucky to kind of go a lower starting point yeah. so before we really get into new flavors and we just and, and it might take us a year or two to get there we don't know like we we have no expectations of how fast it'll grow it'll only grow if Pe- word of mouth, if social right. media, if people like it, if the market um, demands it, you guys, will one be. referral leads to the other referral. And, and, you know, I don't think it's going to take us out of jobs and stuff. Sure. I don't think it's going to go that crazy. Even if it does, you know, we'll hire other people in town and, and help have them help us run it. And, 
Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of companies, but you know, there's a lot of states that aren't dominated by one. And so we feel like, see what our state will give us. And then there's Colorado's and Nevada's and California that's not dominated by that mm. one. So we feel like give it time, let it mature. Companies like this usually take three or four years to mature. Um, and as you add more products, we have apparel, we have hats and bags and shirts yeah. and stuff like that. Cause that's fun. Um, people can represent that and they feel like they're part of the clan. Right. Right. You know, our, our whole like motto is like earn your place. Like, you know, um, so we're having fun with the Valhall and a lot of our imagery it's Viking based. It's right. fun. Like, um, you know, people like that. We actually get people, we've got a guy on Instagram, we, we, we looked him up and he, he looks like a Viking and we, we, I know he, I know he likes that because all of his posts. And so we, we, we mentioned to him and we said, Hey, his name's Derek too. We, we said, Hey, we've got this brand and you would, you would love it. Like yeah. it's Vikings for you, it's, man. It's for you. <laughs> and we love your look. And, and he was like, I love it. Thanks, man. And, and, um, he did an awesome video for us. And it's just, I, think like, I saw that awesome. Um, so we, we feel like the Viking name resonates with most. We've never heard someone that said, that's a weird brand. Most people are like, they'll, they'll take a step back and they're like, oh, I get it. Like Viking. Like, that's right. cool. Like you've watched the History Channel Viking yeah. well, show. Well, there's that it's... other, isn't there like a Netflix series? I'm like sure there Valhalla is. Valhalla yeah. seasons, uh, episodes. So um, that's that's kind of our little side gig. So when you have a new product like this, which I've been through and I, I know how it works, and when you kind of explained to me a couple bumps in the road that you guys have been yeah. through, um, I was like, hey, man, no problem. Like, I've done this. I've launched new products and there's some growing pains. Um, if you want, like, let's talk just a little bit about, you know, a couple of those bumps, some of the learning experiences you guys have had. And the reason I want to do that is there's always so much focus on all the, the all good, the glitter yeah. and all, everything that's so cool about everything and and then when I feel like normal people or new people to be an entrepreneur, try to go through these things and they have a couple bumps, they think like, well, this isn't for me. I think you know? bumps are like, like just so common. Yeah. Like well, there isn't, there's not, there is not bump or how, how do we say that? That there's always, there's always. just tons of bumps. Yeah. And you should expect it though. So that's kind of what I want to yeah. get out is like, Hey man, you guys launched this product. You're very smart individuals. You guys had the brand, you had all this stuff, but hey, there were still some trials and some pivoting and some things you guys had to figure out. Yeah, so we've, I mean, the, the everything came out great. We love it. Um, you know, like there's always bumps, like even in the labeling and the stickers and all the little things like, you know, we've, we've created a label and um, sometimes the colors come off or, or that they don't have the sheen. And so um, the, the very first bump, we were so excited that the manufacturer's like, hey, we've got it done. And you're going to pick it up. We'd been waiting forever. Like, it's like, it's your baby. Like you finally got it. Like, and he's like, we just got the labels and we're going to put them on tonight and we'll have this for you tomorrow. The labels came back and they were too big. Oh. And that wasn't the manufacturer's problem. That was, that was the label. It just, it, the, the sizing got off and, sure. and, and that delayed us probably four weeks. Wow. Because to make a label, you got to send it to a company. Um, they're usually backed up. Uh, they have probably errors all the time. It's not like they're going to make it tomorrow for you. So that yeah. was a huge frustrating thing is we kind of had to um, kind of be patient. So uh, we got the label on. Everything is great. Um, you know, we get the product. The, the The label's right. But after a while, everybody's like, it tastes really good. We get, we've got great feedback. But some of the main like bodybuilders that know pre-workout – and even ourselves, we're kind of like, we're not getting enough from it. And um, so we, we counted the scoops in here and the scoop size was, or we counted the serving, the scoop size was too small. Yeah. So first of all, that was great news to us because all the feedback that we got was great. This stuff is awesome. I'm doing great. Uh, this, the one scoop that we have is amazing. And then we got a few of them. We're like, I, I think your serving size is wrong. And then we started feeling the same thing. Like, well, no one else is telling us that. And I think maybe two people had told us that and us co-founders started feeling it too. Cause we had tested a yeah, ton you to expect. Yeah. And you can kind of feel it in your body. 
Um, and one of them that you feel is from beta alanine and it kind of makes your face feel warm. Yeah. They, they call it fire face. Like you're flushed. Yeah. That's kind of like the first thing that releases in your body when you take a pre-workout. Um, it's kind of a sensitivity. I don't really get it, which is frustrating because I want to feel it, <laughs> but I just, it's a sensitivity. Some people don't, some people do, um, some people if kind of, they don't like pre-workout for that. Yeah. But I think those people that don't like that just don't understand what it's doing. They feel like I'm going to be like that the rest of the day. Um, it usually goes away after 10 or 15 minutes, but that's just that first process of your blood flow opening up the nitric oxide, all that rush in your face. So, um, we started noticing since I didn't feel it, I never worried about it. I still got great energy. I was working out better than any pre-workout I'd had. So I was like, this stuff's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but the other guys, they felt it. I'm like, I just don't feel it as much as I get the others. I still love the pre-workout. But um, so we finally realized that our scoop was just too small. So as frustrating as that was, the scoop is in a sealed bottle. Yeah. And there's 2,500 of them. <laughs> um, there's just not a lot we can do. And so the manufacturers being great, they're, they're trying to get us new, you know, um, uh, new scoops and trying well, to work with the customers. And the next thing I want to bring up is the way you guys handled that yeah. was exactly who you are and what the brand is. So yeah. I get this big text from you about like, Hey man, we kind of messed up this, this, and this, and this, these aren't right. You should be getting another, a uh, third of a scoop, I think is what it was. Two thirds, two thirds of a scoop. Two thirds. And when we get those scoops, we're going to send one to you yeah. apology letter. And I was just like, dude, I'm good, man. Like, I'm you know what? 99% <laughs> of you like, that's great news because I want to take more. Yeah. And I was feeling bad that I was taking more. I'm like, actually, you were taking the normal You're supposed serving. to be. Yeah. So it's a scoop and two thirds. Yeah. That was the first thing I pulled off of that though. When you sent yeah. me that, I was kind of chuckling to myself and I was like, well, this is the type of people that are behind this brand yeah. in that, Hey man, we're going to send you a new one. Sorry. Our fault took ownership of it, you know, and, yeah. and then you guys moved down the road. So, you know, we're still waiting on some of those fixes and those things to come through, but I don't, I don't think it's, it's hindered us much. Most people yeah. are like, dude, whatever, man, I'll just take an extra scoop. Like, and I'll feel right. better and, and, and I'll work out better. Cause I was working out great on the one scoop, but man, I might as well take the full serving. Cause I want all the stuff in it. So it wasn't a huge thing, right. you know, and the manufacturer, it, it feels big though. And the manufacturers explained to us that that's just part of a product. Like you, you go through bumps and bruises on their side. Uh, they still made a smashing product and they've done good job. So right. The great news is that going forward, we learned early and now mm -hmm. everything else should be good because we know the product's good. So uh, it's like one thing in business I've had to learn is yeah. in bringing on new people for, so I have, I'll have the same kind of story, but in a different way. So I've had younger kids come and work for me for different things. And, and when they make a mistake that costs me a couple hundred mm -hmm. bucks, you know, or thousand bucks, um, I would, I'd get mad at it. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I had someone tell me once, they said, dude, be grateful that they made that mistake when it cost yeah. you a thousand bucks versus when it cost you a hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. And it kind of put it in perspective of like, okay, like let's make those issues early and then address them. Yeah. And so for you guys, it's like, yeah, dude, there could have been 10,000 exactly. bottles or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So. so good thing you learned it early, yeah. you know, yeah. um, go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good learning experience, you know, so we're, we're, we're excited to, to, to let it grow and, um, see where, see where it takes us, you know, like, so all the fitness people that are listening or people that are just interested, try it. Yeah. Get it. You can go to our website, valhollandlabs.com. You can order there. We've got, um, social media, um, at Valhollen Labs. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting influencers that post and, and do things for us. And most of them are gifted to us. They just love it. They love, they, they want to be part of, uh, you know, the Valhalla and clan, you know, and so they're, they're reaching out to us. How can I help you? What can I do? I love it. I want to be part of it. Yeah. So that's what we wanted is like, can we get people to buy into it and really love it and ask how to, how to help? Cause that's how we'll grow. Cause right. we don't have the time to go like, go set up a table no, and pass it yeah, out at the gym. You know? And so, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. That's a hit on that one. That's where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I thought it was great when you first brought it up to me, I was like, dude, I love it. I'm in, and I'm not even a workout gym guy. Yeah. Right. And I would think I know more people that drink 
energy drinks, then don't, I guess would be the best way to put it. And I'm not saying this is like the fix all right, whether you're a gym guy or a monster guy, but I mean, it's helped me. I mean, I've killed, like I'll have a monster every now and then if I'm just at the house. Um, but when I'm going straight to work and I'm hammering all day, like we did, I mean, we did 12 hours today and we're moving, we moved three safes and installed a vault door. And just, I feel like having that just sipping on it versus having the crash at noon that a monster mm-hmm. would give me. Um, I mean, it's, that is a huge difference too. Oh, hundred percent. That's what I noticed yeah. from it. That was my feedback was I'm not tired at 1 PM yeah. from hitting a monster at eight in the morning. Yeah. Um, and, and I think part of that and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, as I'm drinking it, like I said, it takes me hours to drink yeah. it. I'll drink a monster in 30 minutes. Yeah. And so I think kind of prolonging that out is what helps me well, throughout can, the day. And a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I'll go to the gym at like nine o'clock at night. And then like, do that. You, like you take that at nine o'clock. I'm like, yeah, like I, when I'm done, I go, I go home and I'll go to sleep. No problem. Like, man, if I had that amount of caffeine during like, there's no way. And I'm like, well, like it, it's just different. You hmm. know, it's, it's not six Mountain Dews. Right. I, if I had six Mountain Dews, I think just my stomach would hurt. Well, the sugar would kill yeah, you. Yeah, sugar. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, with the brand, we just, we have other visions of maybe adding other lines to this uh, in in the fitness, maybe even into the endurance line. Yeah. Um, we'll take it as far as it'll let us take it, you know, and, and, and it's, we want to be really smart. You've been in businesses, I've been in businesses where, Sometimes things just don't work yeah. and you just got to stop it. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're in that phase right now of, is it worth it? You know, or do we just need to stop it? Right. And so right now we're super excited and we haven't had any bad feedback. And so, um, you know, uh, if you guys want a discount code and should throw a discount code out? Sure. Uh, I was going to actually ask you, is there a way we could throw that out? So there is a, a, a launch LA U N C H 10 off code gives you 10% off. Uh, we have half shipping right now. Um, we don't really have it in a lot of stores right now. Uh, we've got some up in the, the, the Vasas up, uh, North. Uh, we're hoping to get some in down here in St. George where people could just go into the gym and buy it. Right. Um, but for right now it's all on online. We're also, if it's probably too late, but I'll throw it out there cause it's really cool. Um, we're having a Christmas giveaway. Um, it's a six month membership of all Holland bag of all Holland shaker of all Holland hat. It's like seven or 800 bucks, um, to our Instagram followers. So, um, if you don't catch it this time, look on our website, right, look on our it. Instagram. We'll probably be doing several of those a year. Um, but that one's pretty easy to, to like and follow and comment and all the Right. Stuff. But th- those are how businesses grow, sure. you know, and that's, that gains traction. So check out our Instagram page for sure. And is that, a the launch 10, is that uppercase, lowercase? Um, is there any sensitivity to that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think, I think it's just capital L and then all the rest of them are just lowercase, okay. you know, and, and I'm, I've never had one person tell me it wasn't. So I bet you it's not case sensitive. Okay. I say, I know I used it when, yeah. when I bought mine. So, yeah. so, um, so yeah, if you guys want to reach out, you can get on their website. The website is ballhollandlabs.com and then all the social medias. Um, so it's a cool thing. It's St. George packed in St. George or St. George yeah. area. Yeah. Leverkin. Um, and then I don't, I don't know. If Two owners a- in St. George and one in Utah County. Yeah. I think the cool thing about it is, I mean, you're backed by two medical doctors. So, I yeah. mean, who, who can say that in the pre-workout world? It's nice. You know, we, we, we researched it and we studied it. We, we wanted to make sure that if we were going to put something out there, that it had good stuff in it. And so we really researched hard to put the best quality in there. And I think that's why it performs well, um, because it's all good stuff. There isn't a lot of extras. Right. Um, and, and if you do your research on your pre-workouts, you should notice a difference between different brands if you look hard enough. If you just go and you look at the sexiest logo, or the, we might win that. But, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're going to win that anyway. But if you look and you're just like, well, that logo looks really good. good. And the, the guys at the gym tell me all the time, like people literally just walk in here and like, I'll just, I'll get that one. They never look at anything. Hmm. And so it's like, you know, if you're putting something in your body, you know, as, as a chiropractor, do a little research. You know, give us some time, you know, as far as fitness goes, 
if you're taking pre-workout to make better goals, give it some time, you know, get in, get in the gym, exercise, do your stuff, but give it some time and don't give up and you'll, you'll find success. And this should give you some sort of motivation because you know, you have a friend right here that can kind of help get you through that maybe sometimes boring exercise. Some yeah. people are like, I get bored going to the gym. I'm like, I'm not bored when I'm taking it. Like I feel very focused and I want to get the job done. Yeah. And coming from a non-gym guy, just consistency in anything, yeah. um, you know, consistency with our podcast, consistency with our store, our ads that we run, um, going to the chiropractor, yep. right? Like consistency is where you want to be. And if taking that and going to the gym is your consistency, great. Take that. Come to the chiropractor office. We'll have a great time, right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate okay. you coming Love in. It. This thanks has been for fun. Me. Yeah. Um, thanks for the hat. Yep. And uh, appreciate you. I'm, we'll make an appointment and come see you soon. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Guys, that's episode 77. Uh, this is Russ Jepson, Dr. Russ Jepson. Is that how you? Yeah. yeah. Dr. Russ Jepson. And uh, over at Vista Healthcare. Make sure you guys, if you, you're interested in chiropractor, make sure you go and see him. Uh, great office, great people over there. And again, episode 77, make sure you like, share. If you have comments, um, we'll tag all of the businesses in there. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm sure you're okay with that if we kind of interact with, with Russ too. So um, love you guys. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you guys next week. There it is. Awesome. Good job.